<sighs> that there is the van that inspired it all. G'day everybody and welcome to part two of our super duper wany and insane camper conversion. If you haven't already seen part one, you'll probably want to go watch that so you know what it is we're actually doing here and where we left off. Now that picture I just showed you, it inspired all of this. When my wife and I were in Ireland, we hired a wicked camper and spent a week driving around. It taught me three things. One, camper vans are convenient and awesome. Two, they don't have to be fancy and elaborate. And three, maybe, just maybe, they don't need insulation. During the learning phase of our camper build, I had seen a lot of people putting insulation into their vans, but this costs both money and space. And I wasn't really sure if they actually needed to do it. After reading through a lot of forums, it appeared that a lot of the insulation that people were installing was being done incorrectly anyway. So I figured, you know what? Stop wasting our time. Let's just go straight to the people who actually do this for a living. So I called some companies here in Australia who build and convert campers. The general consensus was no. Here in Australia, you don't need insulation and they don't put any in their campers. And anyway, here we are a few years after the build and I have slept in this van in temperatures ranging from zero degrees to 42 degrees. I'm not gonna lie, that 42 degree night was a hot night. But a little bit of insulation was not gonna change that. And apart from that night, we've slept fine. All the things used in this episode's build and where you can buy them are listed in the description box below. And if you have any questions or comments, please don't hesitate to leave them in the comments section. Alrighty, on to part two. Hindsight. Here we are, our first hindsight. This fan slash vent, I thought it'd be a good idea to put the two into one, but I wouldn't do it again. You're unable to alter the fan's direction of blow of air and it's always just straight down. It is really loud, like fan above your stove going full bore with the bore actually rampaging around your kitchen loud and it cost $190. So next time I would just get an openable roof vent with no attached fan. I did end up getting fans for the van, but I will elaborate on those in another episode. was terrifying. But the little fact that I was also cutting out a patch of rust that had rusted right through the metal made it slightly easier. The spot turned out to be perfect for creating airflow and this is the end where our heads lay so it's great for venting out our hot breath, thus stopping a buildup of moisture and more rust. <laughs>
hindsight. Now there's no denying, with the engine underneath where you sit in the 2001 Toyota Hiace, it is screaming banshee loud. One positive is you get free heated seats, but I thought it'd be a good idea to install some sound deadening products. Makes sense. The sound deadening mats were great at making the metal panels of the walls, floor and ceiling go from a ding ding to a thump thump. But honestly, after installing the wave foam insulation over the entire base of the van, I didn't really notice any difference and it was expensive. So if I could go back, I'd still install the sound deadening mats, but not the wave foam. Warning, warning, I just, please let this get your attention. Okay, are you listening? Good. Do not screw any screws into your fuel tank. Before you go screwing, <laughs> before you go putting any screws through the floor of your van, make sure you know where your fuel tank is. And once you know where it is, do not screw screws into it, okay? Good. Hindsight. A nice little hindsight for this right angle aluminium that I bought to make the kit guards out of. I probably would next time go 20 mils by 30 mils, maybe even a little bit more, because it didn't seem to come down over the steps far enough. I can still kind of see underneath it. So it's just a minor thing, but that's what I would do different next time. Hindsight. Okay, this is probably the biggest change I would make with the build. I thought it would be great to have this gorgeous looking floor in it 
And one, not only did it cost a lot of money, but two, it was made up of pieces like a puzzle. Once I ended up putting the bed frame and the drawers and the cabinets and everything in, you only end up seeing like a quarter of all of it and the rest of it's just covered over. So if I could go back and do this again, I would probably just buy a, a nice, cheap, big vinyl sheet to go over the floor, then that'd be it. Thanks for watching guys. If you enjoyed this video, don't forget to smash that like button and subscribe. I look forward to seeing you next time. Ah!